Number 45. Write Lewis structures for the following molecules or ions. And then we have A, B, and C. So I'm just going to write over here. Let's do A over here. We'll do B over here. And we'll do C down here. Okay. So we're writing Lewis structures. And Lewis structures are always coming from covalent molecules. All right. So we're talking about two nonmetals or metalloids that are acting as nonmetals. Um, and we're going to be sharing electrons. So with covalent structures, we will be using double bonds, single bonds, and triple bonds because that's how we show that electrons are being shared. So I just want to preface this by saying that all teachers and professors may have a different way of teaching you how to draw Lewis structures. Some uh, teachers and professors draw dots to show electrons like I did over here. Other teachers or professors use a line to signify um, lone electrons. So my method might not match their method. However, my method would be correct um, if you wrote it on your quiz or test. It might just not be the way that is preferred, but objectively speaking, it is technically a correct structure. And I found over the years that um, the method that I use is probably one of the easiest methods that students can learn from, and that's why it's called the foolproof Lewis structure method, all right? So it's very, very simple. I will go through the rules with you. We've done tons of problems like this already. So if you haven't done those yet, go back because those are easier. But if you want to start here, hey, that's fine too. All right, so let's get started. So for A, we need to find the Lewis structure for SBH3. So first things first, you got to write a blueprint of the atoms. Now, when we write a blueprint, we first have to figure out which atom is the central atom. And I'll say CA here. So central atom. And central atom is always the least electronegative. And remember that hydrogen can never be in the center. So in this case, we only have SB, which is antimony, and H, which is hydrogen. Hydrogen can never be in the middle. So this one's pretty obvious. It's going to be antimony in the middle surrounded by three hydrogens. So that's the blueprint. Now you will draw valence electrons around each atom. So you have to look on the periodic table, and I gave you a pretty simple one over here because Lewis structures are only with nonmetals or metalloids, so you only need this little space on the periodic table. So antimony has five valence electrons, and each hydrogen has one. So you will draw five dots around antimony and one dot around each hydrogen. So we got five for antimony, one, two, three, four, five, and then each hydrogen has one. So one, two, and three, and that part's done. Now you will only bond single bonds between the atoms. And remember, a single bond is one electron from one atom and one electron from another atom, and they are bonding together. This means that you are sharing two electrons, all right? And that is a single bond, so that's an SB. So one electron from hydrogen bonds with one electron from antimony, that's one. Here's another single bond, and here's another single bond. Great. So now we just check the outer atoms for the octet. Outer atoms means that they're not the central atom. And just remember, there are some exceptions because it's chemistry, right? There's always exceptions. So hydrogen always wants to have a max of two electrons, and boron will have a max of six electrons if it is neutral. So hydrogen over here only has now two electrons. Remember, a single bond is counting as two electrons. So since hydrogen has two, and hydrogen wants two, right, then that's good, and all the hydrogens are good. So if I just look at this hydrogen, this hydrogen has two electrons, so that one's good. This hydrogen has two electrons, so that's good. And now, since all the outer elements are good, just check the inner one. SB should have an octet. So um, antimony has two, four, six, eight electrons. That's what the octet is. Octet is eight electrons, and that is all good. I'll just put over here that the octet is eight electrons. And that's it. This one was easy. Box this answer off. That's the Lewis structure for this one. B, xenon. Oops, X E. Difluoride. Okay, so 
First one, which is the central atom? It's always going to be the least electronegative. So just remember your electronegativity chart. As you go from left to right across a period, your electronegativity will always increase. And as you go from top to bottom, electronegativity will decrease. So xenon's all the way over here. Fluorine is up top here. Fluorine, you guys should remember, is actually the most electronegative element. Nothing can beat fluorine. So that means that by default, xenon has to go in the center. So xenon in the center, surrounded by two fluorines. That's the blueprint. That was number one. Now we just draw the valence electrons, and then we make those single bonds. So xenon has eight valence electrons, and each fluorine has seven. So I'll put eight dots around xenon and seven around each fluorine. So let's get to it. We'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we make only a single bond. So one electron from one atom. So one electron here binds with one electron here. One electron from here binds with one electron from here. And now you'll check the outer atoms for the octet, the eight electrons. So if I look at fluorine, fluorine has two, four, six, eight electrons. So that's good. That has the octet. And this one has two, four, six, eight. So all of the outer electrons have eight. So let's see if the middle guy is okay. Xenon has two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's a little bit more than eight. But is that possible? The answer is yes, and that's called a expanded octet. Expanded octet can only happen first when your central atom has more than eight. So it's never going to be the outer atom. The outer atom should follow the octet rule, but your central atom can have more than eight. Technically, it could have basically 10 or even 12. So in this case, since xenon had 10, that's fine. And the only atoms that can have the expanded octet are below um, period two. So it can't be in period two. It's anybody below period two. So it's not the metals because metals are ionic, but it's basically all of these. All right. So since xenon's all the way down here, that's below period two on the periodic table. So xenon, if it's the central, can have more than eight. And in this case, it has 10. Now, the only thing that I would suggest is to just clean this up a little bit. So we like to make it as symmetrical as possible. So I'll always um, have your electrons as a pair. So since this one electron and this one electron are kind of lonesome by themselves, I'll just manipulate it to make them a pair. So what I'll do is I'll just erase these four and I'll make it as symmetrical as possible. I'll put the one pair over here and the one pair over here. And that looks pretty good to me. So box that answer off. And that's B. Now for C, SE8. A cyclic molecule, so it's cyclic, with a ring of eight selenium atoms. Whoa. Okay, so this is where geometry comes into play. A lot of the shapes that you will see in your Lewis structures, if they're especially a ring, um, will follow geometry rules, and you'll see this all the time in organic. So if you guys are in organic, get, get used to knowing how to draw hexagons and octagons and squares and all that type of stuff. So it's a ring with eight selenium atoms. So by geometry rules, right, eight should be an octagon. So if you guys are living in the United States, um, it will resemble what a stop sign looks like. A stop sign is an octagon. So we have selenium. Oop, I'm not even going to draw the bonds yet. So we're going to have to kind of make this look like an octagon. And an octagon has the eight shapes. So it will look like this, right? Whee. And at every kink will be a atom. That's where your eight are. So here's four, and then here's the other four. Now, I've already jumped the gun, but yes, these are going to be the single bonds 
that are going to be shared. But let's draw just selenium with the kinks. So I'll put selenium, selenium, we'll have the four, and then all we need are the two outside and the two outside. Okay, so there's my eight selenium. And now selenium has six valence electrons. So for each one of them, I'm going to draw six valence electrons. So here we go. That's one. Here is two. Okay, this is the third selenium. Actually, let me make that one a little bit nicer. This is the fourth selenium. And each one of them, I'm just drawing the six valence electrons. This does get a little bit tedious, but it's a good exercise. Okay, this one, we are almost done. I'll put the other one over here, I guess. And then this will go like this. Okay, perfect. Now we need to bond single bonds between the atoms. So for each one, you take one electron from one selenium and the other electron and you will bond them. And if we did this properly, it will look like an octagon. So there's one, one and one, one and one. These are kind of looking good. Do you see how I'm connecting only one electron to one electron? One and one. And look at that. I mean, it looks pretty much like an octagon. This one should have been a little bit, you know, down. But overall, it looks good. Now, since all the seleniums are exactly the same, I should only just check one of them to see if it has the octet because we want to check for the octet. Octet meaning that they have eight. So if I look at this selenium, this selenium has two, four, six, eight electrons. So that means that probably all the other ones have eight. So this selenium would have two, four, six, eight. And if you guys want to, you could check them all and they would all have eight valence electrons, which means that this is the correct drawing. So that one was fun. Box that answer off. That's the answer for this one. And yeah, we did 45. What'd you guys think? These were fun ones to draw. I like the rings. I especially like rings. So they're fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, stay safe out there. It's pandemic time for us. Um, yeah, just stay safe. Happy studying. See you guys all in the next video. And if you want to help the channel out, click subscribe. That would mean the world to me. Thank you.